Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Sea. Oh dear, we have birds over to the right. But that's not the point. Last episode, well, we had a few problems, I'll say. Uh, mostly related to the Something Awaits You quality. In that we didn't have it for two of the three things I wanted to do. So, that was upsetting. Couldn't get myself the Memento Mori way back at Station 3. Couldn't uh, continue working for Isri because we eventually want to recruit Isri and, well, they're not, uh... They have an option to recruit them. Uh, it's a bad one. But if I get uh, in with the Pirate King, I have a better option that probably doesn't eat my memories. You know. So that's the sort of thing I want to do because... Well, I like my memories and the skills that they allow me to have. Other problem is I couldn't realize, oh, right, hunger, that's a thing. And missed a bunch of supplies disappearing into the gullet of some idiot over on Shepherd's Isle. Ugh, disappointing. And yeah, we did just dive, but I kind of just want to go briefly to the Grand Geode. Ah, perfect. No, wait, no. The distant bells... Does that mean my something awaits you quality is restored? I can't remember. I'm hoping it does. It does! Wonderful. So, I'm going to just compile a port, port report here and uh, get on my way, if you don't mind. No, thank you, thank you. You are a lovely place, but I don't care. No, since we have this, I want to go to the Isle of Cats. Could make an argument for going to Visage, but the Isle of Cats lets us continue our story along. Mind you, Visage lets me do that too, but that's a much more... how do I want to phrase this? Oblique way of doing it? Like a side path? Like a... ah, oh, what's the term? Hmm. My vocabulary has been degrading. It's very upsetting. <sighs> but oh well. Oh well, we shall survive. And this way we won't have our brains eaten by bees. Which is terribly unpleasant in the Sunless Sea. I say brains, it's really just your memories. Which somehow doesn't make it better at all in any way, shape, or form. Hmm. Yes, yes. Come, come, come. Get into the port. Thank you, hi. Royal prerogatives. Refusable. Why would you refuse this? I've been singing your praises to Leopold, Isri's eyes warm at the name. You could almost envy the Pirate King. Almost. I would like to introduce you to him. Yes, I think it's time. They make a mime of thoughtfulness, though each word they say is carefully measured. But when one meets a king, one needs exactly the right sort of gift. It's only polite. You agree to the courtesies. Fetch me someone who has very recently been up to the surface. Leopold rather fancies surface memories, you know. Ah, maybe you don't. But it is true, nonetheless. Your patron dismisses you with the advice that the Cumaean Canal is the likeliest place to source such a particular gift. Indeed it is. So we're going to just quickly go up to the Cuman Canal, come back, and maybe make a stop at Visage briefly, just to get some stories there, and hopefully get the things that we need in order to cure Rosina, or at least stabilize her. She is actually, if we look here, almost stable. So that's good. I might even be able to get her the letter from Lorenzo soon. And hopefully that doesn't kill her. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Even if she dies horribly from having her soul ignite, there's probably a replacement somewhere. Hi, you just spawned out of nowhere. Not a fan of that. It's been happening more often. Hmm. Hmm, he says. I say. Hmm, well, yes. I guess I could go to the Iron Republic, but no. No, screw that place. Although it does have a very nice weapon. The Memento Mori is a very reliable forward-mounted gun, but uh, the thing you get from there, well, it's a much, much more damaging weapon. Let's leave it at that. Of course, I only have vague recollections of it. Never got it, properly speaking, but I know it's powerful. Regardless, though, oh, 
have the Clattery Air perform an urgent intervention. A bandage-wrapped sailor is trying to gain passage to the surface. He must stop desiring it. The trip would kill him. Sure, why not? Bright, shining. You offer the Zaylor passage upward and direct him to the Clattery Air's surgery. When he sees the operating table, he knows he's been tricked, but there's no fight in him. The Clattery Air extracts something from the Zaylor. It... It gleams with its own light. Sorry. The Zaylor curses you for saving his life. Now there's nothing but zailing in the dark, he says, and I'll likely drown instead of burn. But for now, you'd better have me on your crew, since you're the reason I still need a job and rations. Nice. Anyway, I would listen for surface gossip normally, but... We need a gift for the Pirate King. That one looks like a surface sailor. Surely you could coax him onto your ship. Guest writes, you can be charming when you exert yourself. You entice the surface sailor on board with promises of Z stories and neat delicacies, and bludgeon them over the head between courses. They fall gently into a bowl of sea lily soup. You order your crew to take the prisoner below decks and lock them up. They comply quickly enough, but you see them shoot dark looks at each other out of the corner of your eye. Hmm. They will survive, I'm fairly certain. Gather information for the port report. And before we turn this body in, well, no. After, I think. After we turn this Zaylor in to the Pirate King, I think we'll have time to go to Visage. Possibly. Play our part there. And then... Prepare for a northerly trip, or easterly, perhaps. There are places I just haven't visited that often. Unfortunate, I know. But, is true. Also, I should keep sending this bat out, because I think, if I recall correctly, I'd read something about me missing a port. An under Z port. Which is mildly annoying. Hmm... You're polythreme, aren't you? Or polythremi? Pronunciation. Ah, oh dear. Dear, dear, dear. Should check on Rosegate as well. It's been a while. I don't... I haven't actually invested any of me... Any of me attention? I was just about to... Okay. English. Speak it properly. No, I haven't invested any of my attention over to Rosegate and the cigars, but that's neither here nor there. A gift for the Pirate King. Your patron is overjoyed at your return. Eager to meet Leopold, are we? Courtesies do. Hand over your writhing, tear-stained cargo. Two attendants drag the prisoner off to the Rose Garden. You do your best to ignore the screaming. Your patron tells you that it will take some time for your gift's memories to be harvested and the resultant honey collected. You should return later for your introduction to the Pirate King. 200 echoes and a lot more terror. Unfortunate, that. A meeting with the Pirate King. What might one expect from Leopold, Pirate King of the Isle of Cats? A hulking, grizzled presence with a crimson cat tattooed across his back? An oil bearded wretch with a brace of pistols strapped to each hip and eyes like wildfire? A gaunt cheeked honey seeker wasted from years of dissolution? He looks, as it turns out, more like a lawyer than a dissolute lord though he is at least wearing a robe of patterned silk over his dark suit. Behind him, you see a wall of what you think are wine racks. On closer inspection, the racks hold bottle upon carefully labeled bottle of red honey. Captain's compliments, my king. Isri enters with a wine glass of thick honey. Behind them, Zyra drags in a stumbling prisoner. It's the sailor you stole from the Cuman Canal, only they do not seem to recognize you at all. Yes, well... A minor thing. Memories, student honey. Your patron offers the pirate king the wine glass. The king takes a sip, and the prisoner cries out as though his skin is being flayed from his bones. The spice-scented docks of Malacca, Leopold breathes, before he is plucked away by the honey. He returns hours later, skin flushed and eyes bright. I'm very partial to memories of the Far East, very thoughtful of you. He bestows a humming, honey-soaked kiss on Isri's lips, and then Zyra's before er, holding out the vial to you. Now we've taken this sip before, in fact I believe I've taken it multiple times, but I don't think I've ever declined the taste. You just want your reward and possibly to get away from the grim sight of the prisoner rattling his shackles in the corner. Yes, it is rather distasteful I must say. Perhaps some mushroom wine instead? 
I sometimes wish I'd never drunk of the rose's honey. It's one thing to know you are damned, and another to feel it, in the very marrow and blood, Leopold grimaces. For me it was not altogether a choice. He takes the brooch of amber cat's eyes and replaces it with a little silver key, strung on a chain. A key to the cage gardens, a sign of my trust. He then presses a gold statuette of a tiger into your hands. It has eyes of polished ruby. It makes you decidedly uneasy to look into them. Still, it'll fetch a good price. You're always welcome in Port Cavendish, my friend. We are a haven for all those who are free. Interesting. Oh my, that's a lot of wine. That's too much wine, in fact. Oh, surprisingly it isn't. I guess I've burned that much fuel. Worrisome, but oh well. Still useful. Now, invite Isri to join the Seven against Nida. Given Lorenzo's misfortune, you find yourselves in need of a new guide. You broach the subject with delicacy. There's a light in Isri's eyes that you would not describe as reassuring. Hmm. Isri is somewhat acquainted with Nida and the Seven from the memories of the well-traveled notary. You fill in the gaps, but leave enough unsaid to entice. Isri considers your offer carefully. I'm intrigued, of course, and flattered, who would not be? But the stakes are high and the prey inconceivably dangerous. I'm selective in my alliances, Captain. They lean back, considering you. And now, we accept Isri's compliment and admit them into the Seven. Isri's opinion of you is high. You've proven yourself exemplary. I accept. You reminisce about your association thus far and the possibilities of your future alliance, Isri is eager to make themselves useful to the Seven. I'll begin gathering what information I can about Nida and its environs. Travelers from the Elder Continent tend to be circumspect, but my bees don't care. Leaning close, Isri kisses your cheek with unmistakable warmth. To immortality. Hmm. Delightful. A little bit close for my tastes, but still. I suppose we are acquaintances, friends. Hmm. Now... Question, which one would I go after next, I wonder? Hmm. Well, no, it's obviously got to be the financier, because she's the easiest one to get to. Um, second only to Bartuk. Now, on to the matter of, well, the matter of possibly healing Rosina. Maybe. Although if I heal her and recruit her, then give her the letter, that might permanently damage her. Hmm. Well, we shall see. We shall see. Visage. This is the port of Visage, where faces may not be naked. God damn you. Oh well. We won't be going to Visage just yet. We will instead be headed towards Igol. Why Igol? Because I do believe that that is the only other place we can go that might Give us a chance at helping Rosina. Also, I'm going to check on Rosegate real quick because yeah, I, I've i completely forgotten about the port, to be honest. I just remember it being about cigars and not remembering much else. There was some valuables they wanted in exchange for making cigars you could smoke underwater. I'm going off memory as much as I can, but honestly, it wasn't a very memorable port. Actually, my terror situation is pretty bad. I should probably run away from this. Oh, well. Rosegate. Creation of a cigar. Could do, could do. Take a pamphlet, though. Yeah, remind me. Another ambiguous eolith. Right. Romantic literature and unread logs. Right. Things that I can barely ever find. Although the ambiguous eolith, I think I can actually find pretty easily. What? Huh. Interesting that those are available, but also not relevant at the moment. At the moment, we have other things to attend to. Oh? Oh, here we go. Nope. But you! Retrieve supplies. The cargo holds intact. Perishables will have spoiled. For preserved supplies may endure. You don your diving... Yeah... Da, 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 da. Yes. You don your diving suit, and it's a repeat of an event we've seen multiple times before. Hi. As the first watch ends, shouts forward rouse you. Your bosun's face is grim as you emerge from your cabin. The lost one waited himself with pans and give himself 
to the deeps. Took Cook's best kettle, too. Morale is worsening, Captain. Distribute an extra rum ration. Sailors are rarely ungrateful for grog. Huh. Well. This may be an implication that I should... Head home, perhaps. Perhaps that's what the game's trying to tell me. Perhaps I shouldn't ignore this. Oh well, too late. The problem is being ignored. Because as long as I ignore it long enough, it ain't a problem, is it? That's how problems work, right? I'm just gonna burn through a ton of fuel in the process, though. Oh, this again. Escape. Lovely. Ah! Phallotate. Perfect. Hi, I'm gonna kill you in order to, uh, well, just kill you, basically. Just, you know, so I can dissect you later. And by dissect you later, I mean probably actually just leave you for the Gantt pole, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I'd rather you hadn't done that, but that's fine. Eh, a little bit quick on that. Oh, are you stuck? Oh, you're stuck. Oh, that must have been a big problem for you. Hmm. In death, the Thalate looks like the grisly collage of an untamed vivisectionist. Mercifully, most of it has stopped moving. It is rather hideous, isn't it? This is tempting, though, because I do need a secret, and this is very close to getting me a secret. Uh, let the beast go. Unfortunately, that gains me terror, but... On the other hand... Eh, I don't know. I don't really have any way of justifying that. The heck? I'm not the only one who sees that, right? There's a port of some kind. Oh, that's the constant companion. Well, wow, that's annoying. Um, I'm gonna just go up real quick because there's a port here. Also, you're kinda just deadly, so bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, it was a light ship. Hmm. Well, we could. But then we wouldn't get to go to Dahut. Although, honestly, we're not going to get to Dahut this run anyway, so... Yeah. A little less terror makes everything simpler. Also, we can't stay under the Z, because... Somebody's all upset. We got a constant companion now who just wants to kill us all. Like everything else in the Z, but now it's a bad thing. Mostly because our hull is not good enough to kill it. But anyway, moving along. Oh good, a fluke. Good. This is the sort of thing I actually do need, but unfortunately I don't think I quite have enough... Uh, I don't have as much damage... I... Mm. Uh, this is an opportunity that I'm kind of inclined to just toss away because those things are very damaging and terrifying. Mm, I'm inclined to run away, but also... Eh, come on. As long as you guys don't get too terrified of this thing, we should be fine. I'm looking at my terror this whole time because it's just... I know what could happen. Shoot, 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 shoot. Go back, back, back. So for 20 damage this time. A little bit more than usual, but we should still get it. And I've been told there's a chance, however small it might be, to get three secrets doing this. Go! Fuck. Oh well. 68% chance of success and we failed. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh well. 
Let's see. We're close to Eigel, but I want to be, like, just over it before, you know, we dive. Should be fine here. We'll find out. Yep. Perfect. Now, if I remember right, this is the place with the, mu the music man who potentially... Let's see, let's see, let's see here. Hmm. But we'll gain less terror upon leaving. Interesting. Um, no, I'm going to ignore that for right now. Although... Assemble a compromised port report. The first mate does not want an accurate report to reach the Admiralty. They will reward you with extra needles, they say. Okay. A grave and holy place. You invent a tale of life in the Fortis Kettle. Daily feats held at midnight in Jerusalem, according to the Pursuer's pocket watch. Switches of holy thorn hung above the doorways, garments of grey linen and black stitching. You do not mention the sickness or the constant need for solace root, or the hatches of the Fortis Kettle that are kept locked, or the occasional groans from below. You say nothing of the wounded captain. Huh. Well... Eavesdrop in the kettle. Voices echo in the coppery corridors. Was I wrong about this place? You hear the tomb colonist and the surprisingly strong old woman bickering over hand of cards. The captain complaining about the bandage sticking to his thigh. You hear us. The scrape of metal as a new submarine docks. Your own crew talking about how the spines give them the shivers. Your crew hear us too. The first mate is talking to the captain in a low voice about what they found in their last exploration. There are fresh needles in the collection. Hmm. Could consume three needles of fortis. Why not? Three is more resonant than one. A piquant blend. The first mate has selected three particular flavors for you. Here's a prisoner's breath of fresh air after fifty years in the cell. Here's a proud father summoned to court in a sordid case against his son. Here's lavender water on a widow's kerchief and the square of light on the wall of an empty bedroom. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, that having been done, where to next? No, there. <sighs> I was apparently wrong. There is no music here, although I could have sworn it was Eigel. Hmm, I'll have to look again. I suppose next episode, well, we probably have to just run to London. Or make a quick stop at Rack. Hmm. Rack, then Visage. Sounds like a possibility. Just on the off chance that Visage actually, you know, lets us in this time. But that's for the future. For now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.